Hello everyone, I'm Asa Waldstein and I'm here today with some lessons about labeling compliance. Labeling on dietary supplements is very important because if a label format is not correctly, this can really signal to the authorities that there might be deeper GMP issues. So this warning letter came out of a company being inspected. During that inspection, the FDA, they issued several 483s to the company and they also collected a lot of product labels. So really, I think the reason why this company received the warning letters is because or the warning letter rather is because they're improper 483 response. And I talk more about 483 responses and really what the difference between a 483 and a warning letter is in a previous post. And I'll drop a link to, to that here in comment. So the key learning points today have to do with label compliance. So let's really dig in on what we can learn. So a common mistake I see companies making is with supplement fact panels not matching the suggested use. For example, if the suggested use says take one to two capsules daily, the supplement fact panel should list the higher amount consumed at one time. So if it says take one to two capsules daily, you must write the higher number, so two capsules. And according to the FDA, the, the amount of a serving is the amount consumed at one time. So if you write take one capsule three times a day, the serving size is one. If you write take one to two capsules three times a day, the serving size would be that higher number, which is two. So also in this warning letter, it notes the incorrect listing of items with a daily value percentage, such as pantothenic acid. So the FDA has pretty strict rules on how you list different items with daily value percentages. Calcium, magnesium, niacin, folate, and pantothenic acid. So in this warning letter, the company was cited for not listing a lot of the B vitamins correctly. They wrote vitamin B1 instead of thiamine, and they wrote vitamin B5 instead of pantothenic acid. So it's really important to make sure that your listing products in your supplement fact panel in the correct format. I will say that the American Herbal Products Association has a wonderful labeling guidance, but I do believe this is only available for members now. Also, I use ESHA, E-S-H-A, Dietary Supplement Fact Panel Program, which is really good too. It's kind of pricey, but it's well worth the money, in my opinion, and I use it every week in my consulting practice. And the FDA also has a decent resource for the order of ingredients, and I'll make sure that that link is included in the Warning Letter Wednesday post. So other learning lessons have to do with label formatting. So companies are probably not gonna get a warning letter if the labels are not formatted correctly. But again, if where there's smoke, there's fire. If the labels aren't laid out correctly and formatted correctly, this can really signal to the authorities that there might, might be deeper GMP problems if the manufacturer doesn't know the rule, the basics of labeling, what else don't they know? So it can really signal the authorities to look deeper. So some other key lessons, not necessarily from this warning letter, but in general, have to do with the line thickness. So the FDA has several supplement fact panel examples on their website, and I'll throw one up on the screen here for you to see. You can see there's a certain type of line thickness um, underneath supplement facts and before percent daily values that not established. So again, the FDA wants these, pro these supplement fact panels to be laid out in the correct format. There are so many more labeling, <laughs> labeling opportunities. So please feel free to reach out to me with your labeling questions. I'm more than happy to set up a free consult to discuss labeling needs. Once again, I'm Asa Waldstein. Have a great day.